Welcome to this week's live ASX strategy session. Thanks for joining me. Great having you with me as always. Plenty of interesting things to talk about this week with the, uh, with the ASX pulling back, some movement in the commodities. So I think we should have a pretty interesting show. A couple of stocks to talk about at the end as well, of course. Any stock codes, you want me to do that at the end as well. Now, everything today, general commentary only, doesn't take your personal situation into account. Having been through all that, let's get into our first chart of the week. So I've got the ASX 200 to start us off with. And this has been a positive week for the ASX 200. Now, that may surprise some people because the market's actually lower than it was a week ago. But I think it's positive because what it does, it relieves an overbought situation. So what I mean by that, now we had an exceptional rally off the um, off last month's panic lows. We got panic low, really strong rally off that. And so what that did, the ASX 200 swung from being below the moving averages to being above the move averages very quickly. And when we get these extremes in price action, there's often a return move back to the moving averages and that allows price to consolidate. It's, it's a, bit like a, a bit like a pressure release and it gives the market a chance to, to catch its breath and then potentially establish a, a new base at higher levels. It's when prices, I think, I think the, the, the problem can sometimes come in when price quickly, quickly rallies and continues rallying, and continues rallying and then it can become stretched above the averages and you can get a larger pullback. Uh, I'll just show you a quick example of that. So like this one back in 22, 2022, strong rally, got a bit stretched above the averages and there was a larger pullback. So I like that we're getting a pullback sooner rather than later. It just allows everything to, to stabilize and maybe give us that next platform for another rally. Uh, I like that we're, um, like we're seeing this pause now and and this is a scenario we spoke about last week so my favorite view is that we get several weeks of consolidation below the um below the highs so we've got the all-time high in august and so that the view i outlined last week i continue to think this week is the the one to be open to is is several more weeks of consolidation um, maybe around these moving averages so I think the most bullish scenario would be if we got if we got something like like this developed over over a few weeks, and then from there you get a platform which the market may then be able to then start to break higher from, and that's where where another rally could could get underway. So that's that's one scenario I think to to look out for. Um, we could also see more of. Um, and I think I think I'll just just on that scenario I just outlined outlined then I think when you get prices moving sideways along the moving averages it's often a sign of of buying interest underpinning the price and then once that supply is is absorbed that's when prices are then most likely to, to break higher and, and move upwards so I think that would be I think that would be the most bullish scenario of um, that we could that we could look for. We could also get more of a, a zigzag type structure and you'll know what these zigzag structures are it's where we sort of like get a bit more of a rally but then it gives way maybe comes back test the um the 100 day moving average and from there it could get could get a reversal that that moves higher so these are just just some of the some of the common common setups that could you know, take us through september but it could also set up, I think, the ASX into, I think it could also set the ASX up for a strong year-end rally. Now, of course, all sorts of ways this could, this could play out. These are just a couple of scenarios. I don't know what's going to happen, and it could be completely different. And it may not, it also may not be bullish. But I think at this stage, I think we should favour the incumbent trend. And the incumbent trend is, is still very much up. So that's why with the scenarios I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking like, like how could a, um, a, a bullish setup eventuate from where we currently are? I think they're the two most likely, the, the sideways consolidation or more of a, or more of a, of a zigzag. 
And the purpose of considering how price action may play out, like you might say, well, look, if we don't know, what's the point of even, even trying, to, trying to map it out? And I think the purpose of doing that is it gives us a mental guide as to, as to what an ongoing consolidation might look like. And the scenarios I've outlined, they're all classic templates. And we often see, see them in markets, whether it be individual stocks or, or stock indices or currencies or whatever it may be. And by understanding what some of the, the things to look for are, I think it can then make the uncertainty a little bit more tolerable. And uh, I also think it helps us when we get these sharp sell-offs like we got this week. We've got a, got a couple of, couple of um, uh, yeah, sharp, sharp days down, Tuesday and Wednesday. And if you're only hearing that the magnitude of the falls in the nightly news, well, then you, you know, that really does open the open the door for getting getting a bit anxious about it. But if you understand the fall in the context of, say, a previous rally, and then you're talking about you know, the likelihood of further consolidation when you then hear about falls, well, then you're probably not going to get so worked up because you can see how it could fit into a into a larger order of how things may play out. I think if we're going to be successful in the stock market, we've got to have we've got to have solid a solid rules based plan. I also think it helps to have an understanding of the possibilities. So that's why I go through and I look at possibilities. What what could happen? Doesn't mean we know what will happen, but it can help us nav navigate what does happen. Now I also want to have a look at while we're talking about the ASX two hundred. Let's have a quick look at the ASX 200 on an equal weighted basis. And it's interesting to do this, just a quick look. There've, there've been a, also been some, there've been some sharp moves in the equal weight over the last month, really. Sharp down, sharp up, another sharp down during this week. But when you, when you step back and you, you look at this overall structure, we've got this classic trading range. This is, you know, this is your classic trading range that we have, have in, in place at the, at the moment. And the price action, you look at the price action, it's choppy, it overlaps. Uh, also, it's oscillating either side of the, of the moving averages. So these are your, your telltale signs of a corrective phase. That's what I think we're currently going through. I think it's corrective to the, um, to the, the, the previous big up leg. And uh, so a corrective phase that will then often lead to another upward phase. That's, I think, the way to be, be viewing the market at this point. Uh, I also like it's been a shallow pullback. And the equal weight is so interesting because it's look, looking at each stock, if you rank them all equally, the biggest stock and the, the, la, and the smallest stock in the, in the ASX 200, you rank them all equally, this is how they all shape up. So it takes out like CBA, you know, pulling things or BHP, those big ones having the, having the most influence. On the equal weight, everything's the same. And so it's, um, I like this is a shallow pullback. It's held on to most of those gains of last year's, last year's low. You know, in my experience, these structures often resolve to the upside. And the great thing is that we have some clear levels to watch. At the, at the top side, we have these previous highs. And on the, on the downside, I think the level to really focus in on is the low from last month. As long as that holds, I think the bias is very much to the upside. If this low gives way, well, that changes things. And we'll look at that then. But at this point, while that low's in place, I think it's, um, I think it's yeah, it's, um, we look at this from the, the upside. Uh, coming back to the ASX 200, like I said last week, I think the odds favour more consolidation over the next, maybe over the next several weeks. I suspect uh, yeah, that could really occur around these moving averages, the 50 and the 100 day moving averages. And, and as I was saying, I think that could set the platform for, for higher levels later in the year. So my approach here is stay long, use wide trailing stops. I'm also on the lookout for good setups to get in get some more money back into the market. And the next few weeks, it just may provide those opportunities that, that, um, that I'm speaking about. Now, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Please leave a short comment, just hey, thanks to the video. It tells YouTube you're watching, YouTube shows other people. So it helps me heaps, please do that. Um, now, gonna move on to the small orgs in a sec, the commodities, 
and uh, a couple of stocks to look at as well of course all your stock ideas so let me know put them in the in the um, in the, the comments box on the side of the live stream and we'll look at those but of course that wraps up the free section so if you're not a strategy session member there's a link below click that come on in uh, cost you very little I think you'll get a whole lot of value for the basically the cup of coffee it costs to, to come on and be a be a part of it all so let's um, let's now jump over to that small ordinaries.